is that a super rare valuable trait in somebody to be able to murder without emotion uh yeah there's and the truth that it is because most of the guys that i know aren't that way like you know even sammy sammy you know uh he told me, he says, I never, you know, Pete, they got me like, I love killing. I don't, I hate it. I hate it. I, he says, and when I get, when I have to do it, he says, I'm so mad at the person for breaking the rule and forcing me to have to do this. Mm. You know, it's business. It's, it's, it's hard to realize that, but, uh, and they say the human body can get used to anything. You can endure anything. And eventually it just becomes a way of life, you right. know? Uh, but, yeah, but Greg, Greg could kill you. Uh, like the, there was an, uh, a lawyer that once described him as good looking, articulate. Uh, he said something like he could sit down with judges and lawyers, have dinner with you, and for dessert he'll kill you. That's how they described Greg, you know. And we had the tape. This 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 uh, a lawyer got caught with heroin got arrested, so he immediately cooperated. And they were interviewing him about all the guys from the Colombo family that he dealt with. Mm -hmm. And we had the tape. So how do we get that tape? You know, Greg's connection got it. Right. And this was became, as we look back on, you know, uh, in time, the handwriting was on the wall. We just couldn't believe it, knowing he was such a killer. Uh, you know, I'll tell you what happened during the war, which, I mean, really uh, made it certain. But there were things like Greg... Junior told me that just weird things that would happen where his father wasn't part of something. The next day, he found out that they all got pinched. You know, right. a lot of that. Uh, but there's a lot more of that going on. There, you know, like Whitey Bulger. Yeah. You know, I'm sure those aren't the only two. Mm. You know, there's... Uh, yeah, Whitey Bulger. He, that's a fascinating story yeah. about him. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. how, and how, yeah. the, how they tested, did those experiments on him in prison. Mm. I don't know if you yeah. heard about all that stuff. No, I didn't. I didn't. It's all that. The, the, uh, There's like a famous uh, government program called MK Ultra during the, during the, um, what's the serial killer's name? Charles Manson. Dur during his yes. whole era, okay. his reign, they, uh, they were testing these mind control, CIA mind control tactics on prisoners. Mm. Uh, by basically giving them certain doses of LSD every single day. Wow. And they were doing that to Whitey Bulger while he was in prison. And he, I think he talked about it, but it was like a CIA oh, like experiment, a that, mind yeah. control experiment. Wow. Huh. Um, anyways. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious about like what, what kind of like human traits did you notice in a guy like this? Gregory, who, who what that makes him able to just murder somebody. Well, you know, it's the same thing. It's it's it becomes second nature. He 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 was a he was born in the life. I mean, at 15, 16 years old, he was already in the street stealing, beating people up, mm, doing all the things right. that. Uh, so he's conditioned an, very very young an, age. An up and coming guy, and somebody that's already in the life sees this trait in him. Sees that he's he's uh, he's tough. Uh, he's got balls. He's got you know got what it takes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then they groom you. Okay, I was groomed. I was taught. I educated the way to life. Uh, I don't think that's happening anymore today because I could see the different people that are in the life now. Uh, it's not the same. It's definitely not the same. They, they, they miss that grooming and teaching and, and having a person become uh, a consummate wise guy that when you walk into a place, they know who you are. They, you don't have to tell them. They say, this guy's uh, somebody to respect. And Greg always had that. He got straightened out. I think he was 18. He got his button. What does that mean? Uh, when you get made into the family. Okay. Uh, officially inducted. Okay. To become an official member of the family. Uh, to have it at that age, you had to have somebody that saw a lot about you. Uh, and he loved money. He loved money. So there's nothing he wouldn't do to earn money. I mean, every, every racket there was, he was in. Uh you know, from Joker Poker Machines to the number business, Shylock, and he was a Shylock to Shylocks. What's a Shylock? You lend money uh, at exorbitant rates. So you give a guy $1,000, and you could charge anywhere from, he would charge me $10, but I would charge 30 40 or 50 per week. That's the interest. They have to pay that every week until they hand you back the 1000 Okay. So he had, uh, he was making, I mean, just what I knew about from, 
the close guys, about 25000 a week in interest. Every week, without fail. Nobody and missed payments. All the people that were getting these loans from him knew that the collateral was their life. Yes. Or? Well, <laughs> their, their well-being. Right. You know, he would probably They're kill them. get their because, legs broken right, or something. Right, We went to work on guys all the time that didn't pay. And uh, even that become, you know, second nature. It, it, you know, they start you out where you're doing, uh, where somebody you're beating up did something very bad, like robbed an old woman in the neighborhood, okay? Or found out they were selling drugs by the school. We go give them a beating. You feel proud in a way. You think you did the right thing. You got this drug dealer away from the school or you got even with uh, uh, this, this person that robbed some a friend's mm -hmm. grandmother, mm -hmm. you know? Then you participate just because a guy owes money, but you're already seasoned. They, they take baby steps. They never ask you to kill your friend. That's like a myth. Like your best friend. No. They're not going to ask. movies. Right. The ones they're going to ask you to kill is somebody, again, early on, somebody that did something really bad. Later on, it becomes looser. This guy, you know, had a fight with uh, Junior Persico's nephew, and Junior Persico's nephew lost the fight. We have to go kill the guy. I mean, it's a fight. Just yeah, I got go in fights him. growing up. If I, if I, I would have been killed five times for winning a fight. You know, I lost fights too. Don't get me wrong, but uh, it's just uh, I actually got called to a meeting uh, that I had. A, I was in an after hours, and we weren't supposed to be in after hours. What's the after hours? Okay, the, the nightclubs close at four o'clock. Uh huh. And there's clubs that open at four. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, and they're illegal, but you know they were all around. Uh, so I was in one of these places, and I get in a beef with, uh, I find out later on, it's Paul Castellano's nephew. I didn't know. And he picked a bad time because I was really at the peak of my martial arts. I was good, and I won the fight, okay? I didn't abuse him. I didn't keep hitting him when he was down. Once he went down and I walked away, it was over. The next night, I get a call. I have to go to the diner. And it's like late at night, almost morning. It's one of those 24-hour diners, you know. Mm. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, why do I got to go see Greg at 2 o'clock in the morning? You know, it's, it's a little... Oh, it's Greg you had to go see? Well, he's doing that call for me. Right. So I get there. I see Sammy the Bull hanging out outside. He says hello to me. I walk in. Who's sitting? Scappy, our captain, Greg, and Paul Castellano. You're shitting your so pants. So I, I, no, I don't know what happened yet. Greg, oh, okay. Greg now comes over to me and walks me outside or to the front door, and he says, what happened last night? I said, what are you talking about? I says, I, we went out. I says, you got a beef? I said, oh, yeah, I got a fight. I says, you know, I says, you know it happened <laughs> once in a while. He says, well, that was Paulie's nephew. So I said, I didn't know. And he's telling me he wants satisfaction. He wants to kill me. <laughs> so Scappy, but I learned a lesson here, too. So Scappy is talking on our behalf. He's captain. He was he was a boss for a while, very well respected. And uh, so I remember now he, he's, Paul's talking to me. He says, if it wasn't for Scappy, I'll say, you'd be dead already. Now, Greg got mad. So he says, if a hair is harmed on his head, I said, you'll find more bodies in the street. Now, Scappy had it to Greg. You know, he shouldn't have said that. But, He's feared. Paul would have shit his pants if they had to go to war together. You know, they, Paul was no Greg. Right. He was a right. boss and he was a businessman. So anyway, long story short, I had to like, I owed Scappy my life now. Right. Because he saved me. So now I owed him. What kind of a guy was Scappy? Scappy, old school, old time mob guy that died in prison. Uh, he got a, uh, 133 years. And he's the guy that they quoted the newspaper. When he got the 133 years, he looked at Junior Persico. He says, well, we only got to do two-thirds. <laughs> and it was in the newspaper. And when he got the time, he was about 65. So right. obviously he was never coming home. Uh, Junior never came home. Uh, so anyway, the funny part of this is after it's over with, I walk outside. I talk to Sammy real quick. 
And he said, he, uh, while I'm walking away, he says, you should have killed that cocksucker. <laughs> he didn't oh, like shit. the kid. He didn't like the kid. So that was funny. Yeah. Yeah.